Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a 4Q remote fireworks igniter out of a little, I think it's like a 10 or 12 dollar relay module here that I bought off of Amazon and this is like an all-in-one thing, all you have to do is provide it with 12 volts of input power, it came with this little remote and everything else, so uh, things you'll need, you'll need this module thing here, there's a link in the description for this. I would probably, instead of this twisted wire that I used to go out to the igniters, I'd use some 16 gauge speaker wire or something like that. And just be advised, if you are going to use speaker wire, I'm using it on the uh, power input here, just try to make sure to get uh, pure copper speaker wire because most of the speaker wire out there is aluminum that's copper coated so just be warned about this uh, for the this is the input power wire here and it needs to be able to carry quite a bit more current than the uh, well it doesn't actually need to be able to carry more current but it has to have less voltage drop than what the igniter wires have to handle so this is only like 22 gauge wire and this is 14 gauge wire coming out on the input here talk about what these are in a second these are the actual igniters but I'll explain how that works but anyway for the wiring of this little relay module it's pretty simple the pins are all labeled down here if you can see that uh, let's see here so from the input let's just go here I've got this 14 gauge speaker cable and this it's fairly important not to have much voltage drop in here. This thing runs off of 12 volts, but if this, the power that's coming into this module drops below about 10 volts, then this will shut the relay off and it'll quit working. So, well, it'll quit working until the power comes back up. So you have to be careful about what kind of wire you use here and how long it is because it needs to be able to handle some current without losing uh, voltage so anyhow this comes in all the negative wires from the igniters are connected together at the negative from the power source I'll talk about the power source a little bit later so all the negative wires for the igniter which are all these black ones here connected straight to that and there's one wire that runs into here this little thin black one, it doesn't have to carry too much current. It's just got to run this board. And that goes into this first terminal here, which is the ground terminal. And that's ground for this uh, little relay module. And then the power wire comes into here. Goes through this and then it gets connected up to this blob of solder here with a whole bunch more wires on it. And this first wire here, this red one, goes down to the power terminal. I'm not sure what it's labeled. I can't see it. Positive voltage. That's what's labeled. Plus V, so positive voltage. And that's the power for the module again. And then, this wire here was the input wire. So, this other bus of wires that goes all the way down here is the power that's going into these relays and that these are all positive wires that are connected straight to the battery you can see there that's connected to pin 2 5 see your 8 and 11 it looks like and that gets connected into the center contact on the relay your igniter wires which are the white ones on here and then they come into the brown wires and then into here. They get connected to pins 3, 6, let's see here, what's that one? 9 and 12. And then those go and it'll switch the power to the igniters on and off. By default, these little relay modules are momentary, so when you push the button, It'll turn on, and when you release the button, it'll turn off. That's pretty simple. 
you can set them to do different things, but uh, for, for this, you just want to leave it at the momentary setting when it comes to fault in. But also, when you get this particular module, you will have to program this to recognize the remote, and I think you can get that information in the uh, page on Amazon. So, because I forgot how to do this, because I did this last year. It had something to do with pushing this button down and pushing a button on the remote, but I'm not exactly sure how to do it. I'll put it in the description of this video if I find it, so. Anyhow, then those wires go out to here. And I think maybe 16 or 18 gauge speaker wire would be good enough for this. Like I said, I already used like a 14 gauge wire on this input so I could get as little voltage drop as possible. But these little 20 gauge, whatever they are, twisted pairs go up to these, which are solid core wire, and I'll show you how you connect the igniters to this in a second. It's fairly important that the ends of this have some solid core wire on them. Uh, I'm using, like I said, 20 gauge or 24 gauge, whatever this is. Wire, I think it's 24. It's either 22 or 24. But uh, these little igniters actually come with a cover and everything else. Here it comes with that box. So I'll take you outside to the garage and show you how I make these igniters in a second. But all they are is 24 gauge. I think on the Amazon listing this is called chromium resistance wire. You could use uh, stuff that's labeled as nichrome wire as well. But uh, this stuff costs around $17 for the roll, so it's about as the most expensive thing. And I think this is 350 feet of it, so it'll last quite a while. And all these igniters really are is coils of that stuff. And the great thing about these igniters is they're re reusable quite a few times. I'm not sure how many exactly, but they're reusable a lot of times. And you also don't have to prepare your fireworks in advance. All you have to do is slip this over the fuse, hit the button, this stuff will grow, glow red. It'll light the fuse up. And then you still have to wait for the fuse to burn though, it's not like a different, some of the other igniters you can put that, put them on the fuse way up close and that'll ignite it and go off instantly, but you still have to wait for the fuse to burn a little while with these, but that's fine because it's still remote ignition. And I'll demonstrate this, I'll take it outside and demonstrate it with some smoke bombs and stuff later. And if you're curious, the range is quite a ways, it's like I don't even know, a few hundred feet at least. Probably at least 500 feet, line of sight with nothing in the way. So uh, I'll go ahead and I'll take you outside and I'll show you how these igniters are made. And I'll also show you how to connect them onto your uh, this board here. And I'm also going to cover up these wires with a little bit of uh, liquid electrical tape here. Uh, you could just use normal electrical tape, but I find that this stuff's a lot more durable and stays on a lot better. And sometimes you put that electrical tape on there, I'll just peel right off. So, you go ahead and insulate this stuff, and then I'll take you outside and I'll show you how I make the igniters. Alright, so for this part of this uh, video here, which is making the igniters, you're going to need a vise or something to hold on to uh, a nail with, or whatever you want to use to wrap the wire around in order to make it coil. I'm just going to use this nail here because that seems to work pretty well. Something to cut the wire with and a, something to measure the wire with. So I go ahead and take this wire and you're going to want about 13 inches of it and I'll put somewhere on the video how long that is in centimeters. Let's see here. You may also want the power source that you're going to use for your fireworks igniter. And I'll show you what you're going to use that for in a minute. And that's an optional step. It 
it's still worth doing. So that's about 13 inches where my fingers are at. Doesn't have to be precise. Okay, so now we have this cut. You'll notice that it's curled up pretty badly. Easy way to fix this here. Clamp it down in a vise like that. And we'll take our power source, which in this case I'm going to use this big old deep cycle battery. And we'll just hook up wires onto the, and these are fairly heavy duty alligator clip wires by the way. So uh, we wouldn't try this with smaller ones. And we'll hook up the wires. Make sure this is all the way at the end of the wire as far as you can get it. And if everything's in shot, we'll hook this up. It'll glow red, and if you just pull it tight, you can straighten the wire out pretty good. And there we go. Still a little bit warm, but cool enough to hold on to. It's a much straighter piece of wire. So the next step is to actually make the igniter. And let's see if I can get a better okay, so picture now, here. Take the nail, which is over here, and that piece of wire that we just straightened. Put the nail up in the vise and we'll put the, uh, the wire in with it so that we can clamp the wire down at the same time. A little bit difficult to get it situated in there, but I left you know, probably like an inch and a half of wire sticking out the side here. And now we're just going to wrap it around this nail. A few times. And then once it kind of gets to the top of the nail like that, you can push the wire down. But this is pretty simple anyway. You can wrap the wire around different sizes of objects, different sizes of nails or whatever you have. And we're trying to make a fairly tight coil. Especially since I didn't leave much of the nail hanging out the top, but that's probably going to be pretty good where that's at. So I'll go ahead and take this out of here. The nail just fell out, but that's alright. We'll kind of reform the end of this a little bit since that didn't get pushed down like that and bend this other piece of wire back out where it should be about like that and now we have the igniter now in order to connect the wire onto the igniter you'll notice that I have a 20 gauge or 24 gauge solid core wire coming off of the stranded wire here and it'll be pretty easy to see why I did it that way in a minute go ahead and strip off quite a bit of this wire maybe like a half an inch or so there we go I like that we'll take some Need some needle nose pliers for this. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to put that wire up like that as close as I can get it to the top of the coil and the tip of that wire. And we're just going to hold them together basically if I can get it where it needs to go. And then we're going to wrap the wire as tightly as we can 
around the wire on the igniter. And then this excess piece of nichrome wire, we're going to bend it up around like that to keep that wire from slipping off. Then we will push that down too. We'll try to get this entire thing solved as we can. And unfortunately we can't solder this stuff. We'll cut off this excess here. But we can't solder that stuff, so that's all we can really do is twist it on there. Like that. And that's about as good as it'll get. It shouldn't move around or anything like that. And we'll do the same thing to the other side. Let's untwist this one more. down and if there's any other better way to do this I'd love to know but like I said can't solder it so I don't think there's a whole lot else you can do and there's two reasons why you can't solder this stuff the can't solder to the nichrome wire at all just won't stick to it, it doesn't seem like. Or whatever kind of wire this is, chromium resistance wire is what the Amazon ad said. And the other reason is, as soon as this heats up, that solder is just going to melt off of it probably anyway. So, because this thing is a little red hot, which I've already seen once when we were making these igniters, but anyhow, that's all for the igniters that are put on here. You got the other four done before on camera. So uh, we're ready to go out and test this all thing. Alright, before we actually light off some fireworks with this thing, I'm going to talk about a couple things first. Uh, one, what you need as a power supply here. What you want is something that can deliver 12 volts at about 15 amps, or more than 15 amps if you want. So I've got this giant battery just because you're just because I'm using this giant battery doesn't mean you should. Uh, this is actually kind of dangerous because it's a an open battery and these things can leak uh, hydrogen gas, which is highly flammable. But luckily that only happens when you charge them. So in theory this should be just fine. Uh, even though it's around fireworks and things. And also I'm going to try to keep this battery as far away as possible from the fireworks and everything else. Now you can definitely use a 120 volt or 240 volt to 12 volt uh, power supply. It just again it has to be able to supply at least 15 amps. I'm not, I haven't actually tested how much power this pulls but I assume it's somewhere around 10 to 15 amps. So, and again, this wire here is very important that this wire is uh, thicker because if you get a lot of voltage drop going into your igniter, that'll cause issues with it not uh, firing properly. The voltage drop on the wire that goes out to the igniters isn't as important. But anyhow, oh yeah, another thing. Let's just say that you wanted an 8Q fireworks igniter and you couldn't find a uh, relay board that actually had 8Qs or 8 channels that you wanted. You can actually take two of these, you can pop the back panel off of this remote and you, there's little solder points in there and you can actually change the channel that this remote works on and this is a learning, I think they call it like a learning controller or something like that. So. This will take any remote, even if you wanted to, you could take a car, a little car key fob and you could uh, use that 
course that doesn't have as many buttons on it a lot of the time but uh, it comes with this nice long range remote that works well so that's what I would recommend using so next I'll go ahead and show you the igniters and kind of what they do off of a power supply when everything's hooked up so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that alright so now everything's hooked up take a look at the igniters here I don't have these in any particular order but if we take this the remote here and you hit A the A button we wait a few seconds this coil over here starts getting red hot if we hit B takes a second gets hot that's the only disadvantage to these reusable fireworks igniters is that it takes a second for them to heat up other than that again if I hit B again it will reheat and I can do that hundreds of times before these things go bad we'll hit C oh, whoops that's A sorry we hit C that one there heats up and this time I'll count and we'll see how long this takes one two three four about four seconds we'll say see if I can time it off of the the timer on the camera here so we'll go back with A yeah about four or five seconds so it doesn't take too long you just have to when you're igniting these fireworks hold the button for four or five seconds or until you see the fuse ignite so that's about it go ahead and take this out and we'll uh, light some actual fireworks with it setup on this is fairly simple too all you have to do find your coil stick your fuse into it it's a bit hard to do with one hand there we go let's put it about like that and that's it for uh, putting your fireworks on so you don't have to put the igniters on first or anything like that you can just slide them over the fuse and you're done. Alright, so our battery's all hooked up. The igniters are all ready to go, so let's uh, see what happens. I'm a little bit of a distance back, not very far though. Kind of give you an idea there. So this little remote's got a little cover over it, over the buttons too. That cover doesn't work very well to actually protect the buttons from getting hit, but still. See what we get here if we hit A. There's a fuse lit. Okay, let's go ahead and try B. I don't even know if the camera got that. C and D. So anyhow, that's about it. It's only a distance of like 15 or 20 feet, but like I said, it easily get two or 300 feet out of it. So uh, that's about it, guys. Uh, there's how to make your own remote fireworks igniter. See you next time, guys. Bye.